हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम अगेन टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर चिरंतन रावल फ्रॉम डॉक्टर ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज सिलवासा दैट इज देयर इन यू टी ऑफ दादरा एंड नगर हवेली टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ग्लाइकोजिनोलाइसिस दैट इज ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ ग्लाइकोजन अंडर द पेपर कार्बोहाइड्रेट मेटाबोलिज्म सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट एस सी what we are going to learn in this module we will try to explore the breakdown of glycogen we will try to understand the role of glycogen phosphorylase in glycogen breakdown we will explore the glycogen debranching enzyme which play a important role in the debranching glycogen is a highly branched large polymer of glucose which is having alpha 14 glycosidic linkages which has branches at by alpha 16 glycosidic bond which is generally present at about every 10th residues within the chain of glycogen glycogen is generally found in the form of granules and contains enzymes for the synthesis as well as degradation of the glycogen means it is found within the granules and that granules also consists of the enzymes which is required for their synthesis and degradation it acts as an important energy reserve glycogen is an energy reserve obviously for us suppose in a human body if extra glucose is there it will be stored in the form of glycogen as and when we require we do the breakdown of glycolysis glycogen it is stored in the liver and the skeletal muscles glycogen stored in the muscle will be utilized for the energy requirement of the muscles only while the glycogen stored in the liver will be used for the energy requirement of the rest of the body so over here what happens muscular glycogen is available for the body to work only for the muscular movement while the glycogen stored in the liver is used for the energy requirement of the rest of the body so in a nut cell glycogen that is present in the muscle is available to do the task of muscles only while the glycogen available in the liver is it will do the task of what you call rest of the body we will also study the role of an important enzyme that is the glycogen phosphorylase glycogen phosphorylase has a key role in this breakdown of the glycogen do remember this glycogen breakdown is also known as glycogenolysis so this glycogen phosphorylase plays an important role in glycogen breakdown glycogen being highly branched polymer as we discuss the glycogen having alpha 14 glycosidic linkages as well as alpha 16 at the branching point so it is a highly branched polymer of glucose which needs another enzyme that helps with the glycogen debranching so over here glycogen phosphorylase only deal with the long chain of glycogen glucose molecule it cannot break at the point of branching wherever the branching occurs that can be done with the help of another enzyme that is called a debranching enzyme this pathway is very important as it helps in regulating blood glucose in a, in between the two successive meals it means when we eat then after the blood glucose glucose level within the body will rise and that's why the, the role of this particular enzymes are very important when body is under starvation for a long time we require glucose and that glucose will be available by the process called glycogenolysis the regulation of this both the process glycogenesis and as, as well as glycogenolysis is very important glycogenesis deals with the synthesis of glycogen while glycogenolysis deals with what the breakdown of a glycogen so it is very important in maintaining the homeostasis of the body this two process that is glycogenesis as well as glycogenolysis are commonly regulated there are certain hormones which stimulates the glycogenolysis like glucagon cortisol epinephrine norepinephrine while there are certain which inhibits the glycogenesis on the other hand insulin which promotes the body to store glycogenesis means insulin reduce the blood glucose where this glucose goes 
it goes for the formation of glycogenesis. So, insulin reduces the blood glucose. At the same time, glycogen is, glycogenesis is promoted. It is inhibiting the glycogenolysis. Glycogen is degraded by two different enzymes. First, the long chain of glucose molecule is released in the muscles to fuel its contraction. It is released in the liver to transport in the blood. It is catalyzed by the glycogen phosphorylase and debranching enzyme. In the second pathway, glycogen is degraded to glucose within the lysosome by the enzyme alpha glucositis and acid martis. So, glycogen basically degraded in two ways. One is by glycogenolysis that involves the two enzymes, glycogen phosphorylase and debranching enzyme. Another one is by lysozyme enzymes that is specifically the acid maltase which degrades the glycogen. The entire process is divided into three major reactions. Glucose 1-phosphate formation from the non-reducing end by glycogen 1-phosphorylase, removal of branches by the glycogen debranching enzymes and glucose 6-phosphate formation from the glucose 1-phosphate by phosphoglucomutase. Concept map. First of all, we will study about the gluco glycogenolysis. Glycogen is present in the cytoplasm in the form of granules. This granule contains various enzymes and regulatory proteins for both its synthesis and degradation. Glycogen is an important stored form of energy in our body. Liver and skeletal tissues are the prime location where abundant glycogen is stored. Glycogen is stored in the skeletal muscle tissue is available only for muscular activities. While liver glycogen takes up the charge of energy supply for rest of the body parts. Structure of glycogen. It is a branched polymer of glucose with alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage that is indicated through straight while the alpha 1,6 glycosidic bond is observed in the branching point at almost every 10 molecule units. The biological degradation of glycogen is termed as glycogenolysis. Glycogen is a highly branched large polymer of glucose molecules linked along its main line by alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. Branches arise by alpha 1,6 glycosidic bond at every 10th more residues. It is catalyzed by the glycogen phosphorylase and deep branching enzyme. In the second pathway, Glycogen is degraded to glucose within the lysosome by the enzyme alpha glucosidase and acid maltase. Glycogen metabolism is very important because it facilitates the blood glucose level to be maintained between meals and also act as an energy reserve for muscular activity. The maintenance of blood glucose is essential in order to supply energy to the tissues. This is a schematic representation of two pathways of glycogen breakdown. In one case, glycogen is broken down to glucose by the debranching enzyme and glycogen phosphorylase, while in another case, glycogen is broken down in the lysozyme to glucose molecule. Over here, alpha glucosidase and acid maltase acts. Glycogen debranching enzyme. This particular diagram explains the role of the glycogen debranching enzyme in the glycogenolysis, how it removes the glucose molecule one by one from the glycogen molecules. Glycogenolysis process. Glycogenolysis requires two main enzymes. Glycogenolysis occurs by a different pathway from glycogenesis. Glucose 1-phosphate formation from non-reducing end of glycogen by glycogen phosphorylase. That is the first step of glycogenolysis. Then removal of alpha 1,6 branches from the glycogen by the glycogen debranching enzyme. So over here the second enzyme that comes into the action. And the third one that is the glucose 6 phosphate formation from a glucose 1 phosphate by phosphoglucotase. This figure explains an overview of glycogenolysis. Glycogen present in the cytoplasm in the form of granules. Over here, glycogen 
is converted into glucose 1 phosphate with the help of glycogen phosphorylase this glucose 1 phosphate is converted into glucose 6 phosphate by phosphoglucomutase this glucose 6 phosphate is converted into glucose this takes place in the liver with the help of the enzyme glucose 6 phosphatase this glucose ultimately diffuses into the blood stream the glycogen stored in the skeletal muscle tissue is availed only for the muscular activities while liver glycogen takes up the charge of energy supply for the rest of the body the entire process is subdivided into three major reactions as we earlier discussed that is glucose 1 phosphate formation from the non reducing end of the glycogen removal of alpha 1 6 branches from the glycogen and the glucose 6 phosphate formation from the glucose 1 phosphate formation now over here we'll try to understand how glucose 1 phosphate form from a reducing end of a glycogen by glycogen phosphorylase glycogen is broken down into glucose 1 phosphate by glycogen phosphorylase it is carried out by phosphorylase reaction involving breakdown of large molecule and forming a smaller units inorganic phosphate is also used in this cleavage reaction such breakdowns of the bond by addition of the orthophos is referred as a phosphorylysis a hydrolysis reaction also involves the same process but it uses water instead of phosphate for the cleavage of bonds cleavage by phosphorylysis is energetically favorable because released glucose is phosphorylated glycogen phosphorylase act on exoglycosidic bond pyridoxal phosphate is a necessary cofactor in the glycogen phosphorylase reaction this cofactor is linked to lysine that is present at the 680 residue of the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase will act repeatedly on non reducing end of a glycogen chain glycogen phosphorylase can act continuously until it reaches four glucose molecule away from the alpha 16 branch point glycogen phosphorylase is an allosteric enzyme amp act as an allosteric activator while atp glucose 6 phosphate and glucose act as an allosteric inhibitor glycogen phosphorylase is also regulated by covalent modification for further detail you may refer the module 26 of glycogen degradation generally in the structure of glycogen about 1 in 10 residues branched in such a situation phosphorylase enzyme cannot degrade glycogen independently it will stop or halt after the release of six glucose molecule per branch this slide explains the formation of glucose 1 phosphate from a glycogen you can see over here the role of glycogen phosphorylase after this reaction one molecule of glucose has been reduced and so the glycogen becomes n minus 1 now we will discuss the second step of a glycogenolysis that is removal of alpha 1 6 branch from the glycogen by glycogen debranching enzyme so now let's try to understand the role of glycogen debranching enzyme in glycogen alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond at the branch points are not susceptible to cleavage by glycogen phosphorylase while it can act continuously until it reaches four glucose away from alpha 16 branch point thus further degradation of glycogen chain by glycogen phosphorylase occurs only after the action of glycogen debranching enzyme glycogen debranching enzyme shows two different activities one is transferase activity second one is alpha 16 glucosidase activity in transferase activity the enzyme removes and transfer terminal 3 of the four glucose residue it transfer this moiety intact to the non reducing end of another branch it involves cleaving of an alpha 14 linkage and formation of a new alpha 14 linkage it another branch this action leaves a single glucose at the alpha 16 branch in alpha 16 glucosidase activity enzyme removes the single glucose residue which is remaining 
branch at bar branch point by the alpha 16 glucosidase activity the same debranching enzyme 91% of the glycogen residue are converted to glucose 1 phosphate by the combined activity of glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen debranching enzyme remaining about 8% are converted to glucose by the alpha 16 glucosidase activity of the glycogen debranching enzyme now let's try to understand the third part of the glycogenolysis glucose 6 phosphate formation from glucose 1 phosphate by phosphoglucomutase glucose 1 phosphate is converted to glucose 6 phosphate by phosphoglucomutase active site of the active phosphoglucomutase molecule has a phosphorylated serine residue the phosphoryl group is transferred from the amino acid serine to the hydroxyl group of a glucose 1-phosphate. It results into the formation of intermediate called glucose 1,6-bisphosphate. The phosphoryl group from the C1 carbon number 1 of a glucose 1,6-biphosphate is then transferred to the serine residue of the enzyme. It results into the formation of glucose 6-phosphate and the regeneration of the enzyme. This reaction is reversible. It allows the interconversion of glucose 6 phosphate and glucose 1 phosphate. This is very important. Phosphoglucomutase is also required for this reaction. This mainly takes place in liver, kidney, and intestine. The phosphate group of a glucose 6 phosphate is removed by the enzyme glucose 6 phosphatase. And the free glucose exits the cell via the membrane localized GLUT2 glucose transporters. That is formation of glucose 6 phosphate from glucose 1 phosphate. You can see that glucose 1 phosphate is converted to glucose 1 6 bisphosphate by the enzyme called phosphoglucomutase. Over here, phosphoryl group from the serine residue is transferred to glucose 1 phosphate. Now, this glucose 1 6 bisphosphate is converted to the glucose 6 phosphate with the help of again the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. Over here, Phosphoryl group from the glucose 1 6 phosphate transport to serine residue of enzyme. Glucose 1 phosphate formation from a non reducing end of a glycogen by glycogen phosphorylase. It is carried out by the phosphorylysis reaction involving the breakdown of a large molecule and forming a smaller units. Such breakdowns of the bonds by addition of orthophosphate is referred as a phosphorylysis. That is a, the way by which glycogen phosphorylase carry out the work. The hydrolysis reaction also involves the same process but it uses water instead of phosphate. Glycogen phosphorylase it's an allosteric enzyme so obviously it has a allosteric activators like ATP, glucose 6-phosphate, glucose itself is an allosteric inhibitor. It is also regulated by covalent modification. We will discuss the same in the regulation of the glycogen degradations that is in module 26. Removal of alpha 16 branches from the glycogen is carried out debranching enzymes. In glycogen alpha 16 glycosidic bonds at the branch point are susceptible to cleavage by a glycogen phosphorylase while it can act continuously at, until it reaches the 4 glucose molecule. Means glycogen phosphorylase stops the its activity when it away from only 4 molecules from the alpha 16 branch point. Further degradation of glycogen is carried out with the help of debranching enzymes. Debranching enzymes has a two kind of activity, transferase activity, alpha 16 glucosidase activity, the glucose 6 phosphate formation from the glucose 1 phosphate by phosphoglucomutase and glucose 1 phosphate is converted to glucose 6 phosphate again that is by the that is a reversible reaction. Active sites of the active phosphoglucomutase molecule has the phosphorylated serine residue. The phosphoryl group is transferred from the amino acid serine to the hydroxyl group of a glucose 1 phosphate. It results into the formation of glucose 1 phosphate. The phosphoryl group from the C1 of the glucose 1,6-bisphosphate is then transferred to the serine residue of the enzyme. It results into the formation of glucose 6-phosphate and regeneration of the enzymes. These are the reversible reaction. It is very important. Phosphoglucomutase is also required 
for this reaction the, it mainly takes place in the liver kidney and intestine the phosphate group of a glucose 6 phosphate is removed by the enzyme glucose 6 phosphatase through a GLUT transporters now let's try to understand revise what we learn in today's lecture glycogenolysis or glycogen breakdown is a process that releases glucose whenever it is required in liver glycogen is stored form of a glucose for the regular maintenance of blood glucose levels so whenever we require an energy that is available from the muscle glycogen as well as we may get it from the liver glycogenolysis preliminary observed during fasting between meals or during extensive physical exercise obviously the breakdown of glycogen in our body will occur as and when we require the glucose molecule so the glycogenolysis occurs in between the meal during the exercise in the skeletal muscle glycogen is potential energy resource for muscle contraction the glycogen present in our muscles provides sufficient energy for the movement of the muscles so they play a crucial role in the movement of the body the process is under stringent hormonal regulation that regulation is stimulated by hormone glucagon and epinephrine that is nothing but the adrenaline we must have learned the flight reaction flight response at that time adrenaline concentration in our body increases the glucagon plays the same story actually glucagon and insulin have the opposite actions insulin decreases the blood glucose while glucagon increases so it is of the adrenaline that is released during the flight response of our body which is responsible for the glycogenolysis certain rare but inheritable diseases of a glycogen storage results in abnormal glycogenolysis so there are certain glycogen storage diseases that might get the reference of this diseases within this paper of biochemistry this glycogen storage disease certain are breakdown of glycogen mccardell disease that is a glycogen storage disease type 5 is such a disorder due to a lack of an enzyme glycogen phosphorylase that shows impaired glycogenolysis over here the glycogen phosphorylase is not present so the patient which is having a mccardell disease in such a cases glycogenolysis is disturbed it results into inadequate energy supply during physical activities and stress pori the fourth disease that is a glycogen storage disease type 3 is a genetic disorder arising from the point of mutation in a gene responsible for the secretion of glycogen debranching enzyme so over here the glycogen debranching secretion is affected so certainly glycogenolysis is is affected it further damages the liver and muscle by accumulation of incomplete breakdown product of glycogenolysis so students glycogenolysis is very important for the harmony of our body if impaired glycogenolysis is there then we may have certain diseased condition so students let us now conclude what we have learned in this module glycogenolysis or a glycogen breakdown is one in the same is a process that releases glucose whenever it is required in liver glycogen is a stored form of a glucose for the regular maintenance of blood glucose level so whenever we require a glucose okay the liver will provide the glucose by the process of glycogenolysis because liver stores the glucose 
glycogenolysis preliminarily observed during the fasting between the meals or during the ex extensive physical exercise. Obviously, when we do a fasting, we require energy and that energy is not available from the food. So, we, it is required, it is provided by the glycogenolysis. Similarly, when we do exercise, we require energy that is also available by the glycogenolysis. In the skeletal muscles, glycogen is potential energy resource for muscular contraction. Whatever the muscular contraction occurs that requires energy and that energy comes from where? It comes from the glycogenolysis of the glycogen that is stored in the muscles. The process is under strange hormonal regulation. Regular, regularly it is stimulated by the hormones like glucagon and epinephrine. Certain rare but inheritable diseases of a glycogen storage results in abnormal glycogenolysis. Like McCardell disease that is a glycogen storage disease 5 is a such a disorder due to lack of an enzyme glycogen phosphorylase that shows impaired glycogenolysis. You will get better idea of this storage glycogen storage diseases in the module 28 and 29 of the same paper. This result in inadequate energy supply during the physical activities and stress specifically we are talking about the McArdle's disease. Similarly core is Forbes disease where it is also termed as glycogen storage disease type 3. It is also a genetic disorder arise due to the mutation in the gene of a debranching enzymes. It further damages the liver. So there are glycogen defects in the glycogenolysis and it ultimately leads to what? The diseases. So glycogenolysis involves the two enzymes. Glycogenolysis occurs in the muscles in the liver but their functions are purposes are different. That's all from my side. Thank you very much.